I could literally lay back and sleep and snore and drool the entire 60 minutes of the show and guarantee you a more riveting experience than what we suffered through last night between the Colts and the Broncos. But I won't do it. It's Friday and we have Dwight Freeney, who will be on the show. James Jones chiming in from London. Beers with Sam Monson of BFF and Rihanna. Yes, Rihanna, right here, right now. the horsey bowl yesterday stay golden po pony boy i'm drinking my salty uh mug today my coffee i have a beer that i can see over there a guinness with my bartender marissa mcbride as we welcome sam monson and to go over some numbers today we'll do uh that's pff up we will have james jones ahead of packers giants two winning teams for the first time going about it in london matt lafleur not happy about getting that stamp on his passport he is just not feeling he's a little cranky with the media ahead of this one this uh, this week so we'll dig into all of that. Of course, Dwight Freeney should be joining us momentarily. He was on with Andrea Kramer and Hannah Storm last night and stopped by. A lot of guests did, Von Miller included, so we'll ask him uh, about this Colts pass rush. But uh, this game was was terrible, and that's that's just all that there is to say about it. I don't want to waste a lot of time on it. I don't want to waste your time. We already wasted enough last night, didn't we? And then overtime, and we're like idiots for <laughs> we're watching, and we still watch. We're still texting each other about it. Uh, it was the most atrocious misread and decision-making that I've ever seen. And it's not hyperbole. I'm not being obnoxious. The first interception was so stupid. Two interceptions in field goal range, and you lose by a field goal in overtime. It is an all-out disaster right now. That said, I do think there's time to turn it around for the Broncos because there are 10 days. These are 10 critical days, and maybe, maybe the shoulder is more of a factor than we think. I'm not a doctor, but I know he was on the injury report. I know I saw him walk into the tent last night. And I got to tell you, I don't hope for injuries, but I'm almost hoping that this is the shoulder because at least it's an excuse for Russell Wilson. Horrible O-line play, horrendous quarterback play, and everyone is dragging Russell Wilson to high heavens. And it's real easy to kick a guy while he's down. It's real easy to come after the character stuff. I'm more interested in how do they fix it? How can they turn it around? Uh, I think they just need to run more. They've been running it well, and the defense is good. They went through a stretch. We all saw it together, miserable, last night. In the fourth quarter, they ran on six consecutive plays, got the ball into the red zone, and then <laughs> Russell Wilson threw a pick in the end zone, so it didn't really work out. So here's a thought. Here's my big takeaway from this game. Not danger Russ, not Mr. Unlimited, the cringiest thing I've ever heard. Not let Russ cook. How about let Russ sous chef? Doesn't that have a nice ring to it? Don't put it all on his shoulders. 43 pass attempts to 28 runs. Just pound the ball. Against the Chargers, pound the ball in 10 days. Do it against the Jets, and then do it against the Jags at Wembley. Not let Russ cook. Let Russ sous chef. Your thoughts at Up and Adams show. Now, I don't know if I have it in me to lift the Colts. I know they got the win here. So for that, I bring in a very special guest. Please welcome for the first time to the Up and Adams show, a Colts absolute legend, an honor to have him, a three-time All-Pro, seven-time Pro Bowler, played 16 seasons in the NFL, most of them with the Colts, one of the best pass rushers of all time, Super Bowl champion, Dwight Freeney! Hey, what's going on, Kay? How are you? Listen, where do we begin? Where do you want to begin with this matchup? Yeah, Where, wherever you want to begin. I mean, it was, I mean, I've been hearing you. You said it was such a terrible game. I'm a defensive guy. Okay. I loved it. Did I loved it. it. No, no touchdowns, all field goals. It couldn't be better. <laughs> Dwight, you are insane. My producer had questions for you as we were talking about it this morning. He goes, I, I bet he loved it. I go, there's no way in hell that he, oh. anyone liked this game. You're saying you enjoyed this defensive performance. The destruction of the quarterback is just part of me. Whenever they do stay <laughs> struggle, I'm going to love it. I'm going to laugh. Whenever the defense plays great, I'm going to love it, man. That's just how, I, that's how I'm built. That's just how I am. Now, was it um, ugly from an offensive perspective? Yeah. All right. Now, yeah. there, there's reasons for that. You know, offensive line for the, for the Colts. They've been terrible all year. Now you have your left starting left tackle playing right tackle. Right. 
Okay, so now you got a guy who doesn't want to get hit. All right, Matty Ice doesn't want to get hit because he's 37 years old. He's been playing long enough, and he understands. You know, you can't keep getting hit, and you you kind of have those 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 visions of just like getting hit. Yeah. So even when you're not getting hit, you feel like you're getting hit. All right, so when you have veteran quarterbacks, you want to protect them. So they're not doing a good job protecting. They're not doing a good job on the run, on the run either. All right, they're not opening holes for their running backs. So when you have that type of situation where you have Matty Ice, who's going into a team that's supposed to be running the ball 30 times a game, Mm -hmm. and you can't open up any holes for the running game. So now everything is on his shoulders, right? And he's sitting back and said, okay, let's do this. And he's getting hit left and right within two and a half seconds, Mm -hmm. pretty much every single time. It's It's a recipe for disaster. So I can understand why the Colts are not functioning the right way because they're built to run the ball and they're not running the ball effectively and everything's being put on Matty Ice's shoulders. Now, the other side. okay, Russell. Oh, I don't know. You know, I, I think that's a tough situation for him. Obviously, you have a new system that you're putting in. And anytime you have a new system, you know, it's, it's going to be some growing pains. Now, this is some terrible growing pains I'm watching right now uh, for him. It seems like they have no confidence in him as far as, you know, where to throw the ball, what to do. Their running game, they've been banged up at running back. So right now, it looks like they're reaching, you know, yeah. and he's missing wide open reads that he would normally hit. Now, that being said, he was in a system for whatever how many years in Seattle. So being in that type of system where you don't have to think about as much where the open receiver is because you have the comfort level of throwing to those types of receivers that you've been thrown to all like year in and year out. Yeah. You get to a Denver team and it's kind of like, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm Russell Wilson, but I've been telling people it's not. And listen, I'm not saying this just because I'm a defensive player and defensive. Okay, Freeney. I promise you, I promise you. But it's not always all about the quarterback. And the quarterback, yes, will make your team better. But it ha- you have to have everything working cohesively, which means the play calling, the offensive line, the receivers running routes. Everything has to be working from a timing perspective. Mm-hmm. If it isn't, it doesn't matter who you got back there. It doesn't matter. It, it's not going to be successful. Yeah, and I, I was going to, one of my questions that, that I want to ask you, like Russell Wilson, everybody's piling on, and obviously it, it, it's the worst he's ever looked, and, and yeah. I don't even, he's at rock bottom. But also, I do think maybe the Colts deserve some love in this one. Yannick Ngakwe, I just, I interviewed him last week. I was just in Indianapolis. Shaquille Leonard isn't even back uh, out there, but Defoe, him doing their thing, do they deserve more credit than they're getting this morning? No, I mean, absolutely. I mean, if you look at what the Colts defensively have been doing for the most part all year, you know, they've been a top five run defense. OK, they they have shut down the run for the most part. I think last week, you know, uh, versus the Tennessee Titans was Gosh. the first time they, you know, gave 100 yards rushing. All right. But that was against King Henry. Right? Who's, who's not going to give 100 yards up against that guy? All right. So if you look at the defensive I guess, you know, uh, overview, let's just call it, uh, for the Colts, it hadn't been terrible. You know, they have been the only bright light, if there's any, uh, on that team right now. And that's the reason why they can be 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. I think that's what they are. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just because of their defense. Now, the defense can play better. You know, I think, you know, the pass rush can be better. And I think they're getting there. Um, but they're going to have to get better to have any type of momentum you know, for this team to go into playoffs because offensively right now, they are banged up at the offensive line position and they can't get anything done. And I like, but I like that you're even talking about them as a playoff team because this is a team that, you know, I, when I was there, they, it was before they took on the Chiefs, but now they've taken down the homes and Russell Wilson, they're getting confidence and they do need to get healthy. You're saying it's not about quarterbacks, but it is. So I'm just going to ask you because you spent some time with both of these guys. You played with Russell Wilson. You also played and spent time with Matt Ryan. Maybe not, you know, as much, but I'm going to ask you which one you're more worried about down the stretch? Jeez. That's a good question. Um, I think that with the lack of protection um, in the Annapolis, if Jonathan Taylor doesn't come back and they have to rely on Maddie 
to throw the ball and they don't figure out a way to protect him, I'm really worried about him just because the age and Mm -hmm. you don't know what hit it's going to be when he, you know, finally, you know, says, all right, this is it. You know, he has like six interceptions, a whole bunch of fumbles. Um, So he's giving up the ball and he's not protecting the ball. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like if out of the two, it would probably be him. Russell, listen, he's getting used to a new system offense. I know it's frustrating. Okay. But in the end, I think being around Russell long enough, they're going to figure something out. Right. You know, over there. And now it may take a few weeks, you know, to figure it out. But I think something's going to click over there at some point. But the offensive line issue, that doesn't just go away. You have to figure something out from a protection standpoint, you know, and your play calling standpoint to figure out how you're going to generate points, yeah. you know, for Indianapolis because they're in the bottom half or maybe last in, right. in, in points this year. Uh- Okay, I, we've spent now seven minutes too many on this tr- trash game last night. I'm sorry. It was a terrible game. And there were no, listen, Dwight, there were no touchdowns scored last night. So I need awesome. to see. No, 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 no. <laughs> In honor of that, I decided, let's see if Dwight Freeney has scored a touchdown. And you have, haven't you? Yes, I have. Let's yes, take a I look. Did. Okay, so take me back to what is this, 2003? What is this, Saints? This is, this is like a 2003 young, young horse, young, young stallion <laughs> Dwight Freeney. I, but you know what's funny is, I should not have even played that game. I had crack ribs going into that <gasps> game. And I had to get like certain injections and I was all off on painkillers just trying to figure out a way to get through this game. And tough. sure enough, yeah, sure enough, the ball was just bouncing right in front of me. You know, I hadn't done anything all game. And finally, I figured, oh, wait, maybe this is the reason why I was like my first touchdown. It was awesome. I you just lit up. I mean, this is an Aaron Brooks sack. And then you return the fumble 19 yards for that beautiful touchdown, getting the win 48 to 13, week four, 2003. So we, there we, we did it. We had a touchdown after Thursday night football. There you go. There uh, it is. I can't believe it was your only touchdown. You are one of the greatest pass rushers of all time, 125 and a half sacks. Are there pass rushers in the league right now that are worthy of your praise heading into week five? Ooh, I mean, you got you got some, you know, and I and I sit there and I watch, you know, I see a little bit of me and some of these guys, you know, you sit there and you watch Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is a complete beast. You know, he's the guy who can turn the corner. You know, he has size. He can he can go underneath you. He can make you miss. He has a, a whole bunch of different moves. Mm. And, you know, the problem is. What do you do to stop them? Because they like to move them around from time to time. And another guy is Micah Parsons. I see Micah Parsons pull out a spin move, and I felt like I was having flashbacks. I, I was sitting back like, oh, my God, is that is that my spin move I'm seeing? Because it was almost yeah. identical to the way that I did it. And, you know, I knew I left my mark in the game once I started seeing things like that. And those two young stallions right there, those guys are going to be playing for a long time. They're going to be great players. Does Micah have a better spin move than you? I'm not gonna say that. Yeah, I'm not gonna go that far. All right, let's not let's not get crazy. I, I can't, we, we, he has a good spin move, all right? But I'm not saying he has a better one than me. That's, that's kind of crazy. Well, we just see the trick. That's kind of crazy. I feel you on that. Now, uh, I want to ask you about Von Miller because I saw. Oh, you, you hung out with Hannah uh, Storm and Andrea Kramer, two absolute goats. What an honor! I bet it was for you to get to watch the game with them on their uh, Amazon simulcast. That's where I was watching it too. Uh, but you know, Von Miller popped by as well. He goes to the Bills. What do you make of that? How has adding him been able to change this entire defense? One player. Uh, I mean, yeah. The, well, the truth is, what they've been struggling with over. I, I mean, as long as I can remember, is a dominant pass rush. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you bring a guy like Vaughn Miller, who's a guy who still has it. I think he's in year 10 and he still can go out there and perform at a high level. All right. You're not asking too much of him. But what you're doing is, look, when it's a passing situation, I need you. And Vaughn is a guy that comes out with plethora of moves, different moves to go out and get after that QB, man. And I actually seen him do a dip move the other day. You know, um, I, I guess maybe three weeks ago, made the guy completely miss, ducked under his his arms. That was a move I did in 2006, 
in, in, in 2005 with Robert Mathis, me and Robert. And you know what? When I saw it, that was another move. I was like, man, he has it. Because when you start doing things like that, playing to your strengths, knowing that you are a guy who's shorter or smaller than the offensive tackle, right. and you can dip under, now you're, you're, you're working at a whole different frequency. You're going out, doing different things, and having confidence doing it. And I think that's what the Bills missed because they had the coverage. They had, you know, the stout cover two. You know, Leslie Frazier always has a great defense year in and year out. But from a sack perspective, they didn't have that guy. And now they have a guy that can go out there and wreck a game. It's so true. And I love that you brought up Robert. You know, I mean, the, 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 you and Mathis were insane. Is there a tandem in the league right now that sort of reminds you of you and the great Robert Mathis? Because you guys did damage. Oh. I'm, I'm, I, I would probably say the Chargers guys. Yeah, yeah, I would say. Mac and Bosa. I would say, yeah, I would say Mac and Bosa is is a good combo. I mean, they're going to have to put some years together now, you know, to kind of, you know, me and Robert are going to put some work in for year upon year. Uh, but I would say you're right. You know, uh, Bosa and Mac would probably be, you know, the the tandem I would think yeah. right now that's at, at the top of the league as far as, you know, dominant guys. You have to have to pay attention to both guys. Yeah, and Bosa is hurt, of course, so that's going to be yeah. really tough. You had, a, you had a short stint. Now, you were with the Chargers for a little bit. Super injured. Yep. Last question for you. It happens all the time. It's like, the oh, it's always poor Chargers. It never works yep. out. Uh, how far do you think Herbert can carry them? Because carry them? even Bosa's banged up. <clears throat> well, I mean, I think he's a young talent that it seems as if he keeps on getting better year in and year out. All right. As long as he understands when it's time to use your legs and run for first downs and when you can throw for first downs and they kind of cater that offense around him as a, as, as a talent that he is, I think they're going to be fine. You know, I always say it's going to come down to the defense, though, and how the defense is going to play, because I believe that they have enough weapons offensively. that's going to score a bunch of points, you know, and points yeah. is not going to be their problem. You know, it's going to be about can they stop somebody on the other side of the ball so they don't have to score 30 points a game. It's you know, very true. They can true. score 20, 24 and, and get an ugly game because sometimes you're going to have ugly games. But you just have to have the other side of the ball to make sure they do what they need to do. It's so true. they got to stop the run this week. They're at Cleveland. We know what Chubb can do. We know what Hunt can yeah. do on the ground. So that'll be a huge task for Brandon Staley and company. Uh, Dwight Freeney, all those accolades, all those all pros, all the uh, Hall of Famer might be in the front of that next time I see you. Who knows? But I'm putting that energy out there for you, Dwight. I know. Thank you. I need it. I appreciate you. You don't need it, but you're amazing. Thank you so much for hopping on. The perfect person right. to, to be, listen. I didn't think it was possible. I found the one dang person that was excited about last night's game, and it was Dwight Freeney. And we've got more coming up right here on Up and Adams Beer Drinking with Sam Monson and a guy who's probably having a pint himself of lukewarm beer somewhere. Oh, the hoodie look is back. I thought you retired that, bro. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. NFL's International Series is underway. Another one in London. Two winning teams, by the way. Packers winning record going up against the Giants winning record. Uh, that is Aaron Rodgers, a very good football player. Meets a very good doggo in the UK. Rodgers living his best life. I actually heard Rodgers wanted to be there even sooner. The team left on Thursday as we bring in my friend and fan duel family and Green Bay Super Bowl champion James Jones, who's in London. How are you? I'm living the dream. I'm out here in London, just big chilling, you know, can't complain. Are you suiting up this weekend? Because it looks like it. <laughs> you see, I got my jersey on, my hoodie on underneath. I'm ready to go. I just left uh, practice a little earlier, and I let them know, hey, you need me in the red zone only because I drink too much coffee. I'll pull a hamstring okay. uh, any other part of the field. But, hey, red zone, I'm good to go. What's, how, how's Aaron feeling? Oh, he's ready to go. I think this is one of them games that we're going to see this Packers offense get it going, get it clicking. I think this is one of the, one of these games that I think we're going to see a dominant Packers football team, the team that we think has a chance to, to win it all. I think that team going to show up this Sunday. This morning I was on my way to work. I had an overnight shoot and I was on my way and I said, why, when did James Jones retire the hoodie? I don't know why I was even <laughs> asking it. And then you showed up wearing it. I thought this look was over. You know, man, I mean, it's retired from catching touchdowns, but it ain't never retired from hoodie swag. Got you know it, what I mean? It's Cali it. swag, hoodie swag. So, you know, I got a swag out every now and then. You used to wear it under your suits at NFL Media, I remember. You were so committed <laughs> to it, and I love it. All right, let's talk about this Packers team. So you have, you have high expectations for them. It's their first time over there. Aaron mm -hmm. was on McAfee, and he was saying, you know, it wasn't my decision when we left, the numbers, the <laughs> metrics. And then LaFleur 
seems kind of cranky with the media yeah. because the plane didn't have pods for privacy. He's cranky about the time <laughs> change. So how is the Packers' first trip to London going? Well, I mean, I think it's going good. I mean, the main thing is you just got to get here. It don't matter when you get here. I came with the Raiders uh, when I was a part of the Raiders, and we came out here the whole week, and I hated it. I hated being out here for a whole week. I'm like, I wish we would have just came a couple days before, you know what I mean, did a little mm. sightseeing, got got to work and played the game. Like, you know, I, we came out here by Wednesday. I'm like, man, I'm ready to go home. You yeah. know, so I think the Packers did it the right way. I know it's their first time coming out here as an organization, so a lot of people were excited to come out here. But I think they did it the right way. Uh, they're in the middle of nowhere anyway, so even if you came out here <laughs> on, on Monday, 12, 12 would have been upset. Like, man, I can't go nowhere and see nothing, do that. So, right. you, so I think they did it right, and I think they're in a good spot as a place as a football team. I think they'll play well. That's great. It's you know, but full disclosure, we just keep it real here on Up and Adams, James. I was in <laughs> Green Bay last week, and I'm sitting in the stands, and I'm texting you, and I'm yeah. saying they look flat, James. What yeah. is going on with them? So be yeah. objective with me. You're seven years removed. You can you can be real yeah. here. What is the problem? Yeah, and it's crazy because I text you back too, and I said I'm on my way yep. to help. <laughs> yep. No, I mean, you just seen a football team that was out of rhythm, and it was one of them games, you know, you playing a Brian Hoyer Patriots team where we know the Patriots can run the ball well, but I thought that was one of the games, kind of how I feel about this Giants game, that that offense was going get, to get it going and put up 35-plus points and look the way they were supposed to look, even though I know they're still finding their way, trying to find that number one receiver, trying to figure out who's going to have certain roles in this offense. I thought that they would be a much better offense that game. You know, so, right. you know, they made some plays, but they didn't look the way I wanted them to look and look like a Super Bowl caliber offense. So I'm hoping this week they come out, they iron out some of that stuff and they look like that Super Bowl caliber offense because they're going to need that offense to make plays if they want to get to where they're trying to it's go. It's so true. And Romeo Dobbs, obviously, we're looking for a lot from him. Christian Watson, him as well. We're looking for those that chemistry to build. How did you build chemistry with Aaron Rodgers? Because you did it successfully in a time yeah. where he had other options to throw the ball to. You know, it's crazy because I even even talking to Romeo and talking to the young guys, I tell them all the time, man, it starts in practice, mm. right? A lot of people think, like, you just go out in the game and you make plays and all that. No, like, even if you have a good game as a wide receiver, five catches for 75 yards and a touchdown is a really good game for a wide receiver. Yeah, you may have those games where you got 150 and all that, but – a quarterback giving you the ball five times and you might even get targeted seven, eight times, that, that's a good that's a good game. You know what I mean? But to earn those targets and to earn that trust is when you're sitting in these meetings with Aaron and he says, JJ, when we get into the game and it's third and seven and we run this route, I want you to run it this way versus this coverage, right? And then we get out to practice and I do that at practice. And he's like, okay, oh, shoot, JJ, where he's supposed to be when he's supposed to be? We just talked about in the meeting. He brought that to the football field. And then you start making plays mm. for him. And then that's how he starts getting confidence in you. And then, then when the ball game comes, he starts spinning the, spinning the ball your way. And then when you get that that real confidence, when he gets that real confidence in you, yeah. he comes in the huddle and he says, hey, J.J., I don't care what Coach Mike McCarthy called, go get this ball. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why, and vice why versa. Does, why does Mike McCarthy got to catch strays out here on a Friday? What Mike McCarthy I'm just saying, do wrong? We, 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 we both play for Coach Mike together. You know I'm a big fan of Coach Mike anyway. But I've been in the huddle right. where he came into the huddle and he says, hey, he looked at Jordy and said, Jordy, go make a play. Right. You know what I mean? But we've had that trust for him. And I think it all starts in practice, man. Being where he's supposed to be in practice, talking to him in meetings, seeing what he's thinking. And then that's when he can look at you and you're like, yep, I know exactly what you're thinking. I got you. <laughs> but, do you, but was there a moment that you can think of specifically where you, oh, you knew, where you knew you had like yeah. where you knew he trusted you was what was there yeah. was there a moment Cause that's what I'm looking for oh. from these guys that moment whether it's on the field practice field yeah. or everyone's making up all this stuff like Romeo Dobbs having lunch like great go take him for fish and chips <laughs> in London go if that's gonna help like what will yeah. help and what was that moment for you. Yeah, so, you know, obviously, like I said, it, it starts with practice and communicating yeah. practice and being where you're supposed to be in practice. But there's a play that me and Aaron still, whenever we get around each other till this day, we still talk about, like, man, that was just a crazy moment to where we knew we were on the same page. So we were playing the Denver Broncos at home. And 
we have a play called Pepper, right? Okay. It's, it's, du- it's double post, right? It's a beeline in the slot. It's a post route on the outside, right? But in the red zone, as a receiver, you must cross the corner's face. If the corner is off, you must cross his face to protect the throw for the quarterback, no matter where he's at in the red zone. Got it. So we line up, and the corner is 10 yards off, and I have a post route on the outside, and the corner is at least three, four yards inside. And I'm like, there's no way <laughs> that I'm getting inside of him, and there's no way I'm even going to have a chance at getting the ball. So I said, you know what? I said, in my head, I said, F it. I'm just, I'm going behind him. I know I'm going to get beat up. It's going to be a missed assignment because right. I'm not protecting Aaron. I'm supposed to be going in front of him. But I said, man, I'm going to go behind him. And I planted and I went behind the DB, and I seen the ball coming. And I said, this man just threw this ball. <laughs> I said, this man, and, it, and oh probably, God. and people, people have seen Aaron make a bunch of great throws, but to me, me and his connections, as much as we've done it, that's the greatest throw he's ever thrown to me. It was coming right behind the corner, uh, right in the honey hole for a touchdown, and I'm like, this dude good. But what when I mean? walked to the sideline, okay. I looked at him and I patted my chest like, bruh, let me explain my bad. He said, that's exactly what I wanted you to do. And then that's when I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, how we, it happens. We that's we what we yeah. need. So that was that's an amazing yeah. story. Wait, I want to find yeah. the I want to find the play to put it on Twitter. What what week was it? And what year? Ooh, I don't know what week it was. Who, it who, was, who were you playing? We were playing the Broncos, Broncos at home. It had to be. It had to be. 2009, 2010 we'll season, one of those years. Yeah, we're gonna find it. That, it, that is it, amazing. It was, it was, it was a, it was a great throw. It came right behind, the, it came right behind the corner, and that's when I, I looked at Aaron, and I'm like, when I was jogging to the sideline, even after the touchdown, like I did my Lambo leap, but it was like a fake Lambo leap. I'm like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <You got her. laughs> even though I got a touchdown, I'm like, I man, 12 gonna be hot. You know, I'm going behind him. Coach Mike gonna be mad. You got to do your assignment. And I came back. He was like, JJ, I was. I, I was hoping you was going to do that. I love that. I said, oh, said we're on the same page. <laughs> we'll find it. Listen, maybe we'll <laughs> yeah. see you in the end zone on Sunday. Who knows what happens in London? And, hey, maybe you'll dap up Odell on the <laughs> sideline. What are the chances he shows up? Yeah, man, I hope Oh, out here. I'll dap him up, man, and let him know there's only one place you need to go play, man, and that's with AR-12, man. If you want to make some big money, you know, win another championship, come play with 12. I love that. James Jones, we appreciate (laughs) you. I know it's a crazy time difference, so go enjoy (laughs) yourself. It's probably nighttime, uh, and give our best to all the Packers. And tell Matt LaFleur to stop being so cranky. Like, you're in London. It's okay. Yeah, I'll let him know, man. You live a good life, man. You shoot. You three and one (laughs) in London. You know, you ain't got nothing to complain about. You're the best, and neither do we. James Jones rocking the hoodie, bringing the nostalgia back here. We're going to find that play. Pepper, was it? Pepper was the name of the play. We're going to get to all of that, and we'll see if uh, Aaron Rodgers has anything to say about it. Maybe we'll tweet about it. Okay, after this, Sam Monson joining us, the highest-graded player this season is Andrew Thomas. That's right, it's Giants. You know who leads the league in rushing? Saquon Barkley up against those Packers. Celebrate the start of football season. FanDuel Casino is hosting a Friday casino happy hour. Oh, I like those. All you got to do is log on to the FanDuel Casino app tonight from 7 to 8 Eastern to get the special offer. Do not miss out. It is FanDuel Casino app, and you can get tonight's Friday happy hour free bonus TGIF style. Now, I love PFF grades. I use it all the time to make my points, especially in fantasy football and who to plug in lineups for DFS on FanDuel. So joining me now, the co-host of the PFF, FF NFL podcast, PFF's lead NFL analyst Sam Monson with a happy hour drink, hopefully in hand. Yeah, what do oh, you yeah. got? Look, I wasn't going to get left out after last week. Last week you showed up with a drink, so I had to bring, you know, represent the Irish, uh, the Irish heritage. I love and, that. And bring me, bring a Guinness. Now I'm not Irish, but if we can take me full really quick, Sam, you'll see Marissa McBride, my super producer, is Irish. She has poured me uh, a beautiful Guinness. And now there's a game that we're playing for this. Yes, yeah, Sam, we're going to try to split the G. I don't know if you've ever heard Do about you know what this that is? before. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What is this? He's familiar? No. So- All right, so what we're going to try to do, we're going to try to make the black and the white line meet in the middle of the G. We're going to see if Kay can take enough sips to land that perfectly. Like in one. She's going to go over, under. What do you think? 
Ah, I think I think she's gonna nail it. Let's Guinness first, is so first aggressive. Tries. This is very aggressive breakfast. It's not a breakfast it's Friday. beer. It's Friday. This is a Thanksgiving dinner of beers. All right, I'm just gonna try, just try to drink to get it to there. All right, right let's do it. Middle of the G. Are we go? Are we gonna? Okay, where you go? Mm. Oh, oh so just close. Sure. Not bad. All right, Sam, enough about beer and Guinness. Thank you, Marissa McBride. You're the best. Okay. Our resident bartender, what can't she do? But Sam, we're going to sort through some numbers. This is very hardy. Um, and we're going to make sense of them as only we can. And, it, you know, sometimes I'm on PF, PFF and I'm looking at numbers and grades and I say, man, that's PFF'd up. And that's what we're doing here. First up, the number two. Now, is that the number of hours I've slept over the past 48 hours because I was shooting a new Dick Sporting Goods holiday commercial overnight or something football-y? You tell me. I believe it's something football. It might might be your thing as well. But Geno Smith right now is the number two graded quarterback at PFF. Not just impressive, not just better than we expected, but Geno Smith is playing at a genuine all pro kind of level for the Seattle Seahawks. One of the most accurate quarterbacks in the NFL. Just an incredible surprise this year. It's amazing. I mean, astounding. It's 77.3% completion percentage, the highest in NFL history through four weeks. It is the Seahawks at the Saints this week. All right, now let's keep it going here. Next, number 20. Okay, I think so that's probably the... Let me guess. Mm. The number of PR people calling Tom Brady to set up fake publicity dates with their clients. Am I right? Wow. We don't track that at PFF yet, but, you know, I'm, I'm open to suggestions of things we could start to add to the, uh, the stat sheet and the database. 20 is actually the number of pressures that Rams left tackle Joseph Nopum was given up through four games. It's also the number of pressures that last year's left tackle Andrew Whitworth gave up the entire season, including the run through the Super Bowl. Ooh. So that's the kind of problems that the Rams Ooh. are dealing with on the offensive line this year. Cheers to Matthew Stafford, Super Bowl champion. He has been sacked 16 times. That was tied for the second most in the league entering week five. And the Rams, really good game this week. Rams hosting the Cowboys. Very excited to see what happens there. All right, the next number, the producers told me, 39.6. Mm -hmm. My guess is, I'm looking at you too, my guess is the percent of Broncos fans that aren't selling their season tickets on StubHub this morning. If it was, I think that would be a, a high number. I imagine that number would be an awful lot lower for Broncos fans based off last night. This is one of my favorite stats in all of football. 39.6 is the passer rating if you took the ball and just threw it at the ground every single play. It's the pass rating of an incomplete pass. <laughs> okay. Both starting Eagles cornerbacks are giving up a lower pass rating than that into their coverage this season. So James Bradbury, 27. Uh, Darius Slay, 29. You are better off just throwing the ball at the floor than targeting either one of the Eagles starting corners this year. That is an incredible, I mean, Brian Barton, my producer and stage manager, is laughing out loud. That is incredible. And they've <laughs> gone from the 10th ranked total defense in the league last year to fifth this season. Five turnovers last week. Uh, and this week, who do they got? Oh, it's the Bird Bowl, right? Cardinals, they're trying to avoid an upset. Marissa McBride, big Eagles fan, Irish girl. This one's for you. How do you say cheers? Slash. Slancha? Uh -huh. Ooh, okay. All right, <laughs> Sam, uh, this is a low number, our next one. Sam Monson with PFF. We're getting PFF'd up. PFF up. Sam, already drunk. That's how it happens. 2.2 <laughs> 2 is the number, and I think that is the sips of this Guinness that I can drink before I feel buzzed because I haven't eaten anything but Sour Patch Kids in the last 24 hours. Look, they used to say in the advertising campaign that Guinness was good for you, and why would they lie? You know, that's yeah, the bottom yeah. line there. 2.2 is the average time to throw for Tom Brady this season, which is by far seconds? the fastest in the NFL. Yeah, 2.2 seconds, Whoa. by far the fastest in the NFL. And it means that Brady's the lowest pressured quarterback in the NFL. As much as that offensive line has been creaking relative to a year ago, as much as the receivers are like a mash unit of injured guys, Brady is doing wonders of making everybody's life easier in that Bucks offense. And eventually, I think that's going to pay dividends for them. I mean, no Ali Marpet. Alex Kappa, no Ryan Jensen, that madman out there. So I'm not surprised Tom's trying to get the ball out quickly. I would do the same. Uh, I also don't think people should count out the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A lot of talk about, oh, the Eagles, no. we love. A lot of talk about the Packers, what they're doing, and they're getting better. Like, Tom looked good. We're, they'll be okay, and there's a lot of drama going on, but whatever. Uh, okay, finally, number 32 on PFF. What could that mean? 
Is it the number of times David Tepper and Michael Bidwill have called Sean Payton to gauge his interest in coaching next year? Yeah, that, that's probably a low number as well. I think you could go over that, absolutely. 32 is the number of broken tackles that Nick Chubb has just on carries, just okay. on the ground, which is 10 more than any other running back in the NFL. The man is averaging almost four yards per carry after contact this season. The Browns offensive line is good. They're going up against the Chargers this, this week. Mm. Remember what they did to them last year where they just ran all over that Chargers defense? Like, Nick Chubb is an incredible running back. He's second in the NFL, 459 yards on the ground, just four yards, four measly yards, hard-earned yards, I'm sure, <laughs> behind Saquon Barkley for the league lead. Sam Monson, you are amazing. What is this incredible shirt you're wearing? It's a Leinster rugby jersey, the province that I'm from. The province that you're from. Oh, wow, this is all too much for me. <laughs> this is a lot, a lot of culture. What? <laughs> Flag, what? Is he from BlackRock? Are you from BlackRock? Look at this. Get over here, Melissa. Are you from BlackRock? I I used to coach rugby for BlackRock's junior school, so ish. Not this quite. Is Marissa. Can we take Marissa's single? Look at hey. how much of this Guinness I took down. I'm so proud. I'm going to be drunk. Good beer, I'm right? going to be drunk for the last 20 mm -hmm. minutes of the show. We're going to do harp next. Uh, Sam, thing you're most looking <laughs> forward to in week five. Uh, most looking forward to. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to that Sunday night football game. The Bengals against uh, the Baltimore Ravens, AFC North Supremacy. Look at you go. That's right. Perfect. The goal control room is like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oof. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting cheers. Thank you. Oh, look at that. I love my audience. Thank you. Oh, Sam Monson, Black Rock, and Guinness. And, and I didn't even hear what you said. What did you say you're most excited about? Bengals, uh, Ravens. I think that's okay. going to be a fun matchup. Bengals and Ravens. Hopefully, uh, yeah, they can get it done. T. Higgins, a favorite of Brandon Marshall. I think I'm going to throw up after this. We will talk to you. We will, of course, <laughs> check out everything going on at PFF.com, the new PFF app, which we love, and we'll see you soon. Sam, will you come back next Friday? Absolutely. Anytime. Thanks so much for having me. Sick. We'll be back after this because we have to talk about what's next, Conrad? I love Fridays on the show. Oh, I've got guys you got to put in your daily fantasy lineup and guys who will score touchdowns in week five. Happy Friday. Time for DF. Yes, here are my DFS players for week five who I love. First up, Zach Wilson. Listen, we got the news that he was going to come back and start when we were, I was on the air and I said some optimism is coming and here we go. He finished 11th at quarterback last week in his season debut. The Dolphins, who they've got on the docket for week five, have allowed the second most passing yards in the NFL this season and might be without both starting corners. I like Damian Harris as well uh, up against the Lions. Still like a mid-tier pricing option going up against the league's worst defense in what will almost definitely be a run-heavy game for the Pats, and no matter who is at quarterback. Another wide receiver that I, or a wide receiver that I like is Corey Davis. I think you stack him with Zach Wilson. That's what we like to do in Daily Fantasy. Uh, Davis was the guy Zach looked for down the stretch. He grabbed five balls for 74 yards and a score. That is clearly a trust factor situation. <laughs> Get him in your lineup against that banged up Dolphin <laughs> secondary. Another wide receiver I love, one that we didn't talk to you, James Jones, about, is Alan Lazard, who has gotten the trust of Aaron Rodgers. They're playing in London it's the Giants and he really is kind of the go-to guy and he's a bit of a value over at FanDuel he's had either a hundred yards or a touchdown in every game this season all three games that he's played and he's coming off his best performance by the way nothing to sneeze at six catches for 116 yards James Jones says if you're a wide receiver and you get 70 yards on five catches that's exciting so he had eight targets against the Patriots expect that to continue uh, against their uh, NFC East opponent the Giants uh, should we throw a tight end in there? Should we? Marissa, am I feeling generous? It's Friday, we might as well. Logan Thomas taking on the Titans. He's off to a little bit of a slow start this year, but he saw six targets last week, and Tennessee's defense has been the second most generous to the tight end spot this season. At Up and Adam Show with your questions for DFS. But let's take, oh, we have Conrad. Is it my birthday? We have a review board? Oh my God, goodness, these are my DF, yes. Value plays, Zach Wilson stacking with Corey Davis. Damian Harris, yes, you can play Ramondre, but I'd like the value at 7,200. These, of course, according to FanDuel. We love FanDuel, we love FanDuel TV. Alan Lazard, get a little piece of that action in London, something to get excited about. And Logan Thomas at tight end, because I love you. And because I love you extra on Fridays, we have got to hit some K-makers, don't we? Are we doing that, Conrad? 
Let's do it. These are guys who are going to find the end zone. Listen, I'm not going to brag. But I got two or three right last week. Did I not? Conrad, can you pop up? Oh, you can't pop in here. He's in the, uh, the old control room. But this is my last week picks, right? Mike Evans scored. Romeo Dobbs, I was there. I willed it. I manifested it. And Stephon Diggs. So I'm going to hit you with three players I think will score a touchdown this week. And I begin with Tyler Lockett. Why? Because he's due. Sometimes the math just works that way. He leads the Seahawks in receptions and receiving yards. We know he's Geno Smith's favorite target. Ride the hot hand. It's time we get Tyler Lockett into the end zone. Now, Jamar Chase, my second guy, a K-maker. I think he scores no touchdown last week, but last season the Bengals torched the Ravens secondary for over 500 yards a game. Really think about that. So I think Chase finds the end zone in week five. Say Sam Monson, who got me drunk on that television, uh, also said he's very much looking forward to that game. And A.J. Brown, my last K-maker. Can we hear some noise for A.J. Brown? Fly, Eagles, fly. One touchdown this season. Just one. It doesn't even seem real, but he's a big play machine. He's going to get loose. It's a big one against the Cardinals. Do not sleep against, a, uh, don't sleep on A.J. Brown going up against that Cardinals secondary. So if we take a look at my K-makers for the week, two of three last week, can I go three for three? Am I wrong? Am I missing somebody? Let me know at Up and Adams or Up and Adams Show. Which one is it? I don't know on Twitter. Show? Thank you. <laughs> at Up and Adams Show on Twitter. K-makers, these guys will score a touchdown. Okay, Rihanna Super Bowl, I will drink to that.